Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Remote, Flexible, and In-Office Work, What Technologists Really Want. We are so excited to have you all here with us today. For those who've attended DICE webinars before, welcome back. Uh, this one will be a little bit different. We've shortened the timing to 30 minutes to help those with busy schedules fit the webinar in. So please add your questions into the chat as usual, um, and we'll answer them through your blog post soon. Uh, next, today's webinar will be available on demand after the live session. A link will be sent to you uh, via email. So please, please keep an eye out for that. Um, there'll also be a post-webinar survey and we love your feedback. We really do read through every single comment on those, and we take what you have to say to heart. Um, so it really helps us deliver the type of content that you're looking for. So <clears throat> look out for that as well. And then one more thing, as we're talking about a lot about uh, remote work in this webinar, I'm also working remotely. Um, so feel confident that my internet is going to hold up, but please bear with us if there's any uh, technical difficulties. <clears throat> so looking over today's agenda, we'll start with a methodology for the technology sentiment report on which uh, much of the data that we have today is based. I'll give a quick executive summary and run through the most recent data we have from technologists and what this means for recruiters and for employers, uh, including how technologists are feeling about career satisfaction, their work environment, that this, that's a big one, work-life balance, and their likelihood of changing employers, where you'll see some really interesting insights there as well. I'll end with a couple of key takeaways, focusing on how you can use the data in your tech recruiting and retention efforts, um, and talk a little bit about the overall value of this information when it comes to employer branding. So before we dive deeply into the data, I want to start with the methodology, just quick notes on the data that you'll be seeing today. So the most recent data on technologist sentiment, which we gathered in the second quarter of this year, has been compared to sentiment data from our salary survey, which was gathered in December of 2020, as well as sentiment surveys that we ran in the spring of summer of 2020. Uh, so the second quarter 2020 insights or 2021 insights are really interesting, but what I think is really powerful about this data is showing what's changed for technologists over time, especially in the differences between how they were perceiving work during the pandemic, the heart of the pandemic versus today. Sentiment data is, is so much about what a person is feeling in the moment um, when they take the survey or, or provide feedback. So seeing the timeline of how things change it can be really instructive. <clears throat> So starting with the executive summary, so just some cliff notes, and if I'm dating myself with that reference, Spark Notes, but you get the gist on that. Even before the pandemic hit the US, demand for skilled technologists was growing exponentially, uh, not only in the tech vertical, so tech companies, but in nearly every industry as the world continued to shift to digitization. If anything, COVID-19 ramped up the process for many organizations, and we're now seeing demand spike again, with some experts saying that we're still far from the top. <clears throat> We, have, we actually have our second quarter tech job report coming to you August 10th um, that'll cover just how sweeping the growth was over these past few months. This, of course, makes everything more difficult for the recruiters called upon to discover and place top tech talent and the employers who need to hire and retain skilled technologists. So today we'll be covering how data the data is telling us that it's a mistake to look at technologists as one homogenous group, especially when it comes to, to return to office plans. The opportunities that are emerging as a result of the change in what technologists want and need at work and the overall value of sentiment data for recruiters and employers for for one good example of what's changed just look at the differences here between the percentage of technologists who want to work from home four to five days per week in december versus just the second quarter of this year so we'll talk more about the why behind that as we dig in so let's start uh, with a section on career satisfaction <clears throat> Both job and career satisfaction were up for technologists in the second quarter of 2021 compared to the fourth quarter of last year, and both remain fairly high. So those increases are likely due to the light at the end of the tunnel for the economy after the worst of the pandemic, and the fact that all things considered, the tech industry and technologists were not hit nearly as hard as other industries and verticals. Just look at the tech unemployment rate. It stayed relatively low throughout 2020, and now sits near 2018-2019 lows at 2.2%. So it all looks like great news for organizations who are looking to retain their top talent, but there is a double-edged sword here, and that's an understanding that career satisfaction is still higher than job satisfaction. The demand for skilled technologists seems to be heading, it seemed to be heading toward a zenith uh, pre-pandemic, and the forced, in some cases, uh, digitization for organizations, then the move to remote environments, the enhanced focus on cybersecurity, all of those have accelerated the need for top technology staff. So in this type of environment, even happy employees can be enticed to make a move. And given the rest of the data that we've gathered, um, it's likely just as much an opportunity for those recruiting as it is for those looking to retain um, top talent. That segues well 
into the top career concerns for technologists. So these are insights into what's bothering technologists in terms of their careers and could provide advantages in attra either attracting new talent or boosting retention within an organization. A few to call out here are not getting promoted. So many organizations put promotions and raises on hold in 2020, putting more pressure on them to reward top talent in 2021 and beyond. I think the difficulty here is meeting the expectations of top talent. Are they expecting double the raise um, or larger promotions because of the loss of a step up in 2020? What will they do if that's not what they get or what they receive doesn't meet expectations? The other two items to note here are remote work privileges revoked. We'll dig deeply into remote work here, but you'll see in the work structure data that we talk about how much of a deal breaker this could be for technologists. Um, and then finally, increased workload. Uh, so the larger workloads and burnout um, compounded by the fact that one of the issues with remote work is that there's no easy stopping point like the drive home. Um, so that, that actually hits some generations harder than others, and it's definitely something to watch out um, for moving forward. So reinforcing the importance of remote and flexible work for technologists, more than three quarters of those surveyed are satisfied with their current remote work, remote work status, which is 7% reporting dissatisfaction. So this, combined with remote work privileges being revoked as a top career concern, points to an absolute need to incorporate remote and flexible work options into employers' return to work plans. And these results align with results actually across every age group that we uh, that we surveyed. So let's jump into work environment. And then this is where uh, the really the meat of the data and where it tells, I think, such an interesting story. <clears throat> So the headline for the technology sentiment report came from this data point. Uh, there's been there's been this prevailing notion out there that all technologists want to work remotely all of the time. Um, many do, but what technologists are telling us as of the data gathered in the second quarter is that flexibility is perhaps even more important. In the second quarter, we're actually seeing full-time remote work and hybrid work, which means the combination of in-office and remote receive the same level of interest with nearly half of technologists seeing both between somewhat and extremely desirable. And those who actually want to work in full-time in an office came in at 17%, which may be higher than some would expect. So more technologists want to work in an office in, one, in some capacity, and that gets even more interesting when you look at the age differences. So here, you can see that the technologists aged 18 to 34 are actually the ones driving the numbers, uh, higher numbers in working full-time in an office and the hybrid approach. Um, whether it's perceived or real, one side of Effect of the move to remote work is that these generations are not getting the experience, they aren't getting to experience the visibility and in person connections to the supervisors and executives. And there's a pervasive sense that it's hurting their careers. They're also finding it harder to connect and communicate with peers, which is another potential benefit of an office environment. They're also telling us that these things are important um, and that they haven't been able to take advantage of them in the fully remote environment. Um, so that's just something to keep an eye on, and you'll see uh, the data, interesting data on the 18 to 34 demographic throughout um, what we've gathered here. Uh, in general here, you can also see that every age group expressed a high level of interest in the hybrid approach, um, which lines up with uh, broader data um, uh, across, across industries. The data on desired remote days really shows the risk in treating technologists as a single homogenous group. The red bars here are from the QG 2021 survey, and while five days per week is still the top choice, two days per week and one day, one day per week saw big gains over Q4 2020. What we're seeing here is a need for flexibility and that a one size fits all approach has a potential to be an issue for technologists. Just watching the news cycle around the big names in tech, making decisions on work structure and return to work and how those are going over with staff are just the beginning, I think, in, in how this is really gonna change the landscape. In looking at the desired days by age group, uh, you can see again how technologists aged 18 to 34 are opting for the hybrid approach, while those aged 35 plus are still more comfortable with a fully remote environment. Uh, for those 18 to 34, three days per week is looking like the sweet spot um, for what they what they want. Nearly 35% of technologists expect that they'll be able to continue working 100% remote post-COVID, but that's not a very high number considering how many technologists still want a fully remote environment. Perhaps more concerningly, 16% don't think they'll be able to work remotely at all. 18% expect they'll be able to work remotely two days a week, which fits, which fits better with the interest in a hybrid approach that we discussed earlier. So this gets really interesting when you compare desired remote days to expected. Uh, and there's a lot in this graph, so I'll walk you through it. 
there's a perception gap here between what technologists want in terms of work structure and what they think they'll actually get. So like the top career concerns, this is an opportunity for employers and recruiters to identify a pain point and find ways to show technologists that they can actually provide the remedy. Um, this chart shows that, breaks down that perception gap between those who desire a certain number of days and what they ex actually expect their employer to offer. The red squares here in indicate where desires don't align with expectations. So for example, at the intersection of one day a week for both expected and desired, you'll see that just 32% of technologists desire to work remotely one day a week, leaving 68% that prefer to work remotely two or more days a week. But as the days increase, the perception gap decreases. So those are the num numbers that you see under the chart. 53% of technologists desire to work three or more days per week, but expect less. 48% desire to work four or more days a week, but expect less. And 39% of technologists desire to work remotely full time. The bottom line here is that recruiters and the organizations that they represent have a real opportunity to exceed technologists' expectations in many cases when it comes to work structure and return to office. In reviewing age differences in expected remote days allowed, technologists in the 18 to 34 age range are less optimistic than other age groups about how often they will be allowed to work remotely, with nearly a quarter indicating that they expect they will never be able to work remotely. 27% indicated they expect a hybrid approach with two days of remote work each week once offices begin to reopen. Remember, three days is the sweet spot. When we get to the section on changing employers, you'll see that these technologists are also the group with the highest likelihood to change. So more food for thought there on the importance of work structure, especially when it comes to technologists. Significantly more technologists in the second quarter of 2021 felt that working remotely contributed to cost savings and boosted happiness and health versus the fourth quarter of 2020. So, and th these beliefs are backed up by data. The studies suggest that the two thirds of workers saving anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours in commute, in just in commute time, are also saving hundreds of dollars per month in associated commuting costs. In a great study from Live Career this year, 38% of respondents noted that they were saving 100 to 200 per month. 29% reported saving 200 to 300, and 3% actually reported saving 500 or more. So just a few items to highlight on the age difference here in, in terms of remote work benefits. Many of the responses are fairly uniform across all age groups. Notable are spikes in more relaxed for the technologists age 18 to 34. That's important, especially given their greater likelihood to have heavier workloads and less work-life balance. And I wanted to call out better alliance with personal values. The values piece is really interesting and it fits into a greater discussion on how generations Y and Z may be pursuing things like purpose, impact, and values alignment more aggressively than prior generations. It reminds me of the move away from culture fit terminology. This was prevalent for a long time, but there are many out there who believe it led to actually building cultures that were too homogenous and lacking in diversity of everything, thought included. Uh, the, and the concept of values fit seems to be moving into its place focusing on how an organization aligns with a candidate's personal mission, vision, and goals. To some extent, the data that we're seeing here is a nod in that direction. In comparing year-over-year -year data, it's clear that technologists figured out how to better manage the distractions and technical issues of remote work as time went on. If there's a downside, it's equally apparent that relationships have deteriorated between technologists and their colleagues and managers. 51% of technologists said that remote work made it harder to develop and maintain working relationships with colleagues, and that's up from 40% in the second quarter of 2020, and 34% claimed they were having difficulty maintaining an effective relationship with their manager. That's up from 22% in the second quarter of 2020. The issues with managerial and working relationships affected technologists age 35 plus slightly more than their younger counterpart, counterparts, with those 18 to 34 struggling quite a bit more with distractions. More so than other age groups, younger technologists also indicate not having the right equipment as a detriment to remote work, which is interesting and could be an opportunity for employers by making sure that onboarding and equipment is covered on your employer brand page and, then, and in the interview process, you'll be setting younger, tech, younger applicants' minds at ease knowing that they'll be well-equipped to excel in a role with your company and technology roles more than any require the right equipment. It's a great example of something that could seem relatively minor uh, on the surface, but it could actually potentially make a big difference in hiring and recruiting. We're also experiencing some interesting shifts in how technologists are perceiving the impact of remote work on culture. Early in the pandemic, most disagreed strongly that it would have any effect on culture, and some of that might have been a response to the executives and organizations digging their heels in to avoid remote, remote work altogether, so kind of a see it works just fine uh, initial response. And it's worth noting that by and large, 
uh, those folks were right, and many organizations have realized that, if anything, it actually, remote work has had a positive effect on productivity. Um, in the second quarter, though, the majority still agree that remote work has an adverse uh, effect, disagree that remote work has an adverse effect on culture, but there's been an increase in those who agree and strongly agree, uh, showing the result of some of the issues that technologists have seen, um, the cons of virtual work that we just walked through. And it's clear that even the organizations who did a good job uh, in transitioning both their employees and their culture to a remote environment are going to have to keep an eye on the pulse of the culture to ensure they're not backsliding in terms of perception. So let's switch, let's switch gears a bit and move into work-life balance. Like so many workers across the country and globe, the majority of technologists saw an increase in workload as a result of the pandemic, with only 16% reporting their workload didn't increase at all. In looking at the age breakdowns, the number of technologists who reported seeing no increase in workload rises to 30% for those age 45 plus. On the other side of things, technologists age 18 to 44 were more likely to have seen workload increases of one to two times or more. Just as workload has increased for most, the number of technologists feeling some level of burnout has also increased. This graphic is showing the difference between survey data gathered between the second quarter of 2020 and data gathered in the second quarter of this year. So one way to look at it could be that it's good news that the increases were not more significant given how difficult last year was. Burnout is always something to watch out for though, and any technologist approaching burnout, especially in a market like the tech job market, is likely to have quite a few options if they choose to look elsewhere for a change of pace. There is some good news on the work-life balance front, and this is likely both a nod to the technologist's preference in general to flexible work, and that some organizations have done a very good job in managing employee well-being during the pandemic. 33% of technologists said their work-life balance is actually better than it was pre-pandemic, with 43% saying it's the same, which in a tough environment is also a win of sorts. Um, all that said though, 24% of technologists surveyed said their work-life balance was worse post-pandemic. Uh, these results again show the range of how technologists are feeling in their work lives and the value of an empathetic approach just overall in building the future of work for technologists. Hmm. Our final section today is on changing employers. The headline here is that since the beginning of the pandemic, more technologists are now looking to change employers. The percentage started at 32% in the second quarter of 2020, built to 40% in December 2020, and then sits at 48% as of the second quarter of 2021. So comparing that to the broader environment, it's not all that surprising as technologists' interest in moving is certainly not occurring in isolation. You can see here that according to a, a Harris poll for Fast Company, more than 50% of the broader workforce is considering a switch with a staggering 44% making actual plans to do so. This wave of interest in moving and actually making moves has spawned terms like the great resignation, the great reshuffle, uh, my current favorite, the summer of churn, which kind of sounds like a river rafting thriller movie to me. Um, and I will take this opportunity to reference the river wild, uh, which is super underrated. But anyway, uh, with numbers this high, employers are going to have to expect some level of turnover and recruiters are likely to be able to access good talent on the market for a wide range of roles. The key, as always, is the technologists, especially those in the upper echelon for skills and experience, really have their choice in where they land. So it's incumbent on recruiters and employers to put together the communications plans, the offers, and the pitches that will set them apart. So as one might expect, the trend of technologists looking to move is driven by those in the 18 to 44 age range with a steep drop off in interest in changing employers for those age 45 and above. Not surprising, given the but given the other data that we've covered on how younger generations are looking at things like work structure slightly differently, it is still worth noting. It also coincides with the data that we have on Outlook in the Technologist Sentiment Report. Uh, we asked technologists about their confidence in the economic recovery, sentiment around the COVID-19 vaccine, and confidence in the future of the tech industry, and all of which came back showing a strong sense of optimism. Um, we won't have time to cover uh, the, that specific data today, so another pitch to check out the report. Um, we'll uh, put that in the chat shortly. Um, they're all things that could be contributing to the increases. We're seeing the number of technologists looking to make a move, and that's an important point that you're, we're really looking at a lot of different factors and variables that are contributing to almost everything that you see here. So it's, again, another reason why the, I think that uh, it's useful to see the timeline on the data. Um, 
but uh, I think there, there's so much more detail in the report if you're interested in digging um, into each of these specific sections we've talked about today. Hmm. So that was a lot of information. Um, here's the most critical part, uh, at least from, from our standpoint, what you can do with the data and analysis. As always, you can have all the great data in the world and it's how you use it that makes it valuable. Um, the question that it seems like everyone is asking uh, uh, and they're looking really looking for the answer to is, if demand continues to increase and the overall job landscape remains this dynamic with so many people on the move and are looking to be on the move, how can I compete in an environment like that, both on the recruiting and retention side of things um, when it comes to, especially when it comes to technologists? So we think there are a few potential answers here in the data that we've discussed today. So number one, it might sound cheesy. Okay, it does sound cheesy, but truly taking the time to understand technologists can make all the difference. <clears throat> Looking just at my, probably my favorite data point from the entire report, Younger technologists are driving both higher numbers of technologists looking to leave their jobs and the group that wants to have in-office time because they're worried about remote work and a lack of visibility hurting their careers. If that's not an opportunity for organizations to show them empathy and even create ways to solve for that starting right now, I don't know what is. Work with your clients or your HR partners um, as recruiters in order to integrate that into your employer brand strategy. Uh, if, if you don't have a specific strategy for this, now is the time to create one. Um, then make sure that it's on your website, uh, in your job postings, interviews, and other materials that they'll see well before they choose to interview with you. Um, and just helping them understand that, that you know that there are things that, especially for employees newer to the workforce, that they might be missing out on by not being in the office. And that you have programs and initiatives in place to make sure it's not a huge detriment uh, to their career. In the same vein, Understand that treating technologists as one homogenous group has downsides, especially when it comes to work structure. There are many things that make the tech, the tech community such a strong and close-knit community. The penchant for lifelong learning, the embrace of a dynamic and constantly changing environment, the creativity and problem-solving skills that so many technologists bring to the table, and the sense of purpose and wanting to make an impact. The stereotypes to watch out for are things like all technology professionals want to work remotely full-time. Be an advocate for flexibility if you can be, as it may help give you an edge in recruiting uh, and, and potentially retaining um, in-demand technologists. <clears throat> this one's kind of a no-brainer, but I've always found one of the best uses for sentiment data is in the adjustments that it can help you make and how you present information on an organization's brand, culture, and identity, and then how you feed that back into the organizations that you're actually working with. So recruiters have a great opportunity to be strategic partners to their clients in advising on employer branding, helping to make sure that there's alignment. Employers want and need to be proud of their brands, and they need to reflect the organization's most important vision and values, but it also need, has to appeal to the candidates they're most interested in attracting, and nobody knows about that better than you. For employers, don't sleep on using this data to bolster retention efforts. Um, combine this with your internal surveys and surprise your tech teams with programs and initiatives directed at mitigating some of their key challenges. And the last one, coming back to empathy, these data points show that even as tech unemployment rates or employment rates were not nearly as impacted as other areas of the pandemic, it doesn't mean that so many are not feeling the strain. So what can you do as an employer or recruiter to show candidates that you understand that things were extra tough and that you want to help? That's one thing that's, that's, one thing that's easy to forget as the world begins to open up and things ramp up again. So many employees never stopped working, they just worked from home. So burnout remains a very real concern. <clears throat> Last pitch, I promise to check out the full report. Uh, we're biased, but we think it's really good. Um, but seriously, uh, there's a lot there. And so we hope you can find different ways to use it. Um, you'll, so you'll see an open link to the report there in the chat now. <clears throat> so finally, before we finish up for the day, um, for those of you who are not or were not familiar with DICE, I uh, wanted to quickly introduce who we are. DICE is a career marketplace focused exclusively on tech hiring with jobs, profiles, and engagement tools that enable employers and technologists to build meaningful, mutually beneficial connections. Let me share just a few things about what makes us different. First, we're 100% tech focused, so technologists and the technologies they power are the future of business in so many ways. We connect businesses and technologists using tools and insights that are unrivaled in the tech industry, making us a trusted source and key de destination for tech hiring. Next, our one-of-a-kind platform and AI matching technology offers a truly differentiated approach, enabling recruiters to find the exact candidates who fit their needs. We also deliver the most relevant job opportunities and career insights to technologists. And last, we've talked a lot about the importance of employer branding today, and that's something that we do well here at DICE. 
The Dice Marketplace enables employers and recruiters to brand themselves through highly effective company pages, recruiter profiles, and targeted marketing. Approximately 75% of candidates review an employer's brand to understand fit before they apply. So with DICE, technologists can learn all about prospective employers before they apply while also showcasing their own strengths and preferences on their profile. So if you're interested in learning more about what DICE can do to help you compete and win in an ultra-competitive tech market, we have our number here, um, and you can always email or chat with us at DICE.com whenever you're ready to do that. So I want to say thank you so much for being with us today. Um, we, we are so appreciative that you were here and took the time to walk through this data uh, with us. Um, please take the follow-up survey um, if you have a moment. Uh, it's, it's very brief. And if you have any questions at all on the content we've walked through in the webinar or the report, please don't hesitate to let us know. We, we always love to hear from you. Um, and finally, I will just say, have a great rest of your day.